Greetings and welcome. This is Father James Spahn, pastor of St. John Paul II Parish in Thornton, Colorado. And right now we are going to record the Stations of the Cross. This is Palm Sunday right now for this recording, but the idea is that you could use these throughout this week, individually or as a family, uh, praying the Stations each day uh, or and especially, in particular, on Good Friday. So this is what we're going to use, is this book here. Um, we'll make this available to you uh, through our usual means of social communication. We'll have the text available for you. Um, and uh, so, uh, just a word about the text. So I'm going to be using the, the Stations of the Cross by St. Faustina. So Faustina, St. Faustina... Um, it'll be um, quotes from her, from her diary, that the voice will be a female voice, fittingly so. So you, when you hear the female voice, those are the exact quotes from St. Faustina, from her diary. And then there's prayers within her as well as scripture. And then also there's going to be quotes from Jesus Christ himself. His words directly to St. Faustina as recorded in her diary will be in here too. So again, quotes from St. Faustina, quotes from our Lord Jesus Christ, scripture verse, as well as the prayers for each of the stations. So this is the last you'll be seeing me, because then you'll be seeing the images of the stations, as well as hearing my voice, as well as the female voice, which will be Faustina. So this is St. Faustina, this little prayer card, which has a, a, a relic there in the bottom right corner there. Uh, left corner, I guess, to you. Uh, so St. Faustina, and again, using uh, these Stations of the Cross, which come from her diary. I, I hope you find them moving and prayerful as I do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. let us pray. Merciful Lord, my Master, I want to follow you faithfully. I want to imitate you in my life in an ever more perfect way. That is why I ask that by meditating on your passion, you would grant me the grace of a deeper understanding of the mysteries of the spiritual life. Mary, Mother of Mercy, always faithful to Christ, lead me in the footsteps of the sorrowful passion of your Son and ask for me the necessary graces for a fruitful making of this way of the cross. At the cross her station keeping Stood the mournful mother weeping, close to Jesus to the last. The first station. Jesus is condemned by Pilate. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to attain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Do not be surprised that you are sometimes unjustly accused. I myself first drank this cup of of undeserved suffering for your love. When I was before Herod, I obtained a grace for you, namely, that you would be able to rise above human scorn and follow faithfully in my footsteps. We are sensitive to words and quickly want to answer back without taking any regard as to whether it is God's will that we should be speaking. A silent soul is strong. No adversities will harm it if it perseveres in silence. The silent soul is capable of attaining the closest union with God. Merciful Jesus, help me to know how to accept every human judgment and do not allow me ever to render a condemnatory judgment on you in my neighbors. You who suffered wounds for us, Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. Through her heart his sorrow sharing all his bitter anguish bearing, now at length the sword has passed. The second station. 
Jesus accepts his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Jesus says, Do not be afraid of sufferings, for I am with you. The more you will come to love suffering, the purer your love for me will be. Jesus, I thank you for the little daily crosses, for the opposition to my endeavors, for the hardships of communal life, for the misinterpretation of my intentions, for humiliations at the hands of others, for the harsh way in which we are treated, for false suspicions, for poor health and loss of strength, for self-denial, for de denying to myself, for lack of recognition in everything, for the upsetting of all my plans. Merciful Jesus, teach me to value life's toil, sickness, and every suffering, and would love to carry my daily crosses. You who suffered wounds for us, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Oh, how sad and sore distressed was that mother highly blessed. Of the soul begotten one. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way, but the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Jesus says, Involuntary offenses of souls do not hinder my love for them or prevent me from uniting myself with them. But voluntary offenses, even the smallest ones, obstruct my graces, and I cannot lavish my gifts on such souls. My Jesus, despite your graces, I see and feel all misery. Oh, my Jesus, how prone I am to evil, and this forces me to be constantly vigilant. But I do not lose heart. I trust God's grace, which abounds in the worst misery. Merciful Lord, preserve me from every, even the tiniest, but voluntary, conscious infidelity. You who suffered wounds for us, Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. Is there one who would not weep, whelmed in misery so deep? Christ, dear mother, to behold. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother, Mary. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel. And to be a sign they'll be contradicted, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed, and you yourself a sword will pierce. Jesus says, Although all the works that come into being by my will are exposed to great sufferings, consider whether any of them has been subject to greater difficulties than that work which is directly mine, the work of redemption. You should not worry too much about adversities. I saw the Blessed Virgin, unspeakably beautiful. She held me close to herself and said to me, I am mother to you all, thanks to the unfathomable mercy of God. Most pleasing to me is that soul which faithfully carries out the will of God. Be courageous. Do not fear apparent obstacles, but fix your gaze upon the passion of my son, and in this way you will be victorious. Mary, Mother of mercy, be near always, especially in sufferings as you were on your son's way at the cross. You who suffered wounds for us, Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. Can the human heart refrain from partaking in her pain, in that mother's pain untold? The fifth station, 
Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, and after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. Jesus says, Write that by day and by night my gaze is fixed upon him, and I permit these adversities in order to increase his merit. I do not reward for good results, but for the patience and hardship undergone for my sake. Jesus, you did not give a reward for the successful performance of a work, but for the good will and the labor undertaken. Therefore, I am completely at peace, even if at all my undertakings and efforts should be thwarted or should come to naught. If I do all that is in my power, the rest is not my business. Jesus, my Lord, let every thought, word, and deed be undertaken exclusively out of love for you. Keep on cleansing my intentions. You who suffered wounds for us, Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. Let me share with thee his pain. Who for all my sin was slain, who for me in torments died. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, no appearance that would attract us to him. He was burned and avoided by man, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those for whom men hide their faces, and we held him in no esteem. Jesus says, Know that whatever good you do to any soul, I accept it as if you had done it to me. I am learning how to be good from Jesus, from him who is goodness itself, so that I may be called a child of the Heavenly Father. Great love can change small things into great ones, and it is only love which lends value to our actions. Lord Jesus, my Master, grant that my eyes, my hands, my lips, and my heart may always be merciful. Transform me into mercy. You who suffered wounds first, Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. Let me mingle tears with thee, mourning him who mourned for me all the days that I may live. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. Jesus says, The cause of your falls is that you rely too much upon yourself and too little on me. But let this not sadden you so much. You are dealing with the God of mercy. Know that of yourself you can do nothing. Without special help from me, you are not even capable of accepting my graces. Jesus, do not leave me alone in suffering. You know, Lord, how weak I am. I am an abyss of wretchedness. I am nothingness itself. So what will be so strange if you leave me alone and I fall? So you, Jesus, must stand by me constantly like a mother by a helpless child, and even more so. May your grace assist me, Lord, that I may not keep falling continuously into the same faults. And when I fall, help me to rise and glorify your mercy. You who suffered wounds for us, Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. Make me feel as thou hast felt. Make my soul to glow and melt. With the love of Christ my Lord. The eighth station, Jesus speaks to the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. 
A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. Jesus says, Oh, how pleasing to me is living faith. Tell all that I demand that they live in the spirit of faith. I fervently beg the Lord to strengthen my faith so that in my drab everyday life I will not be guided by human dispositions, but by those of the Spirit. Oh, how everything drags man towards the earth, but lively faith maintains the soul in the higher regions and assigns self-love its proper place, that is to say, the lowest one. Merciful Lord, I thank you for holy baptism and the grace of faith. Continues the call, Lord, I believe, increase my faith. You who suffered wounds for us, Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. O thou mother fount of love, touch my spirit from above. Make my heart with thine accord. The ninth station, Jesus falls for the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shears, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, though he had done no wrong nor spoken any falsehood, but the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity because of affliction. He shall see the light in fullness of days. Jesus says, My child, know that the greatest obstacles to holiness are discouragement and an exaggerated anxiety. These will deprive you of the ability to practice virtue. Do not lose heart in coming for pardon, for I am always ready to forgive you. As often as you beg for it, you glorify my mercy. My Jesus, Despite your graces, I see and feel all my misery. I begin my day with battle and end it with battle. As soon as I conquer one obstacle, ten more appear to take its place. But I am not worried, because I know that this is the time of struggle, not peace. Merciful Lord, I give over to you that which is my exclusive property, that is, my sin and my human weakness. I beg you, may my misery drown in your unfathomable mercy. You who suffered wounds for us, Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. Wounded with his every wound, steep my soul till it has swooned in his very blood away. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be, in order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled. Jesus was suddenly standing before me, stripped of his clothes, his body completely covered with wounds, his eyes flooded with tears and blood. His face disfigured and covered with spittle. Jesus says, The bride must resemble her betrothed. I understood these words to their very depth. There is no room for doubt here. My likeliness to Jesus must be through suffering and humility. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto yours. You who suffered wounds for us, Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. Bruised ere I did curse defiled, she beheld her tender child, all with bloody scourges red. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Those passing by reviled him 
and shaking their heads and saying, You would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself, if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He could not save himself. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Jesus says, My pupil, have great love for those who cause you suffering. Do good to those who hate you. Oh, my Jesus, you know what efforts are needed to live sincerely and unaffectedly with those from whom our nature flees, or with those who, deliberately or not, have made us suffer. Humanly speaking, this is impossible. At such times, more than at others, I try to discover the Lord Jesus in such a person, and for the same Jesus, I do everything for such people. O purest love, rule in all your plentitude in my heart and help me to do your holy will most faithfully. You who suffered wounds for us, Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. Holy Mother, pierce me through. In my heart each wound renew. Of my Savior crucified. The twelfth station. Our Lord Jesus dies upon the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. Jesus says, All this is for the salvation of souls. Consider well, my daughter, what you are doing for their salvation. Then I saw the Lord Jesus nailed to the cross. When he had hung on it for a while, I saw a multitude of souls crucified like him. Then I saw a second multitude of souls, and a third. The second multitude were not nailed to their crosses, but were holding them firmly in their hands. The third were neither nailed to their crosses nor holding them firmly in their hands, but were dragging their crosses behind them and were discontent. Jesus says, Do you see these souls? Those who are like me in the pain and contempt they suffer will be like me also in glory. And those who resemble me less in pain and contempt will also bear less resemblance to me in glory. Jesus, my Savior, hide me in the depth of your heart that fortified by your grace I may be able to resemble you in the love of the cross and have a share in your glory. You who suffered wounds for us, Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. For the sins of his own nation saw him hang in desolation till his spirit forth he sent. The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, and saw these events. Jesus says, Most dear to me is the soul that strongly believes in my goodness and has complete trust in me. I heap my confidence upon it and give it all it asks. I fly to your mercy, compassionate God, who alone are good. Although my misery is great and my offenses are many, I trust in your mercy, because you are the God of mercy. And from time immemorial, it has never been heard of, nor do heaven or earth remember, that a soul trusting in your mercy has been disappointed. Merciful Jesus, daily increase my trust in your mercy that always and everywhere I may give witness to your boundless goodness and love. You who suffered wounds for us, Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. Virgin of all virgins blessed, listen to my fond request. 
let me share your grief divine. The fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with his spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because the Jewish preparation day for the tomb was close by. Jesus says, But child, you are not yet in your homeland, so go, fortified by my grace, and fight for my kingdom in human souls. Fight as a king's child would, and remember that the days of your exile will pass quickly, and with them the possibility of earning merit for heaven. I expect from you, my child, a great number of souls who will glorify my mercy for all eternity. Every soul you have entrusted to me, Jesus, I will try to aid with prayer and sacrifice, so that your grace can work in them. O great lover of souls, my Jesus, I thank you for this immense confidence with which you have denied, deigned to place souls in our care. Grant, merciful Lord, that not even one of those souls which you have entrusted to me be lost. You who suffered wounds for us, Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. Christ, when thou shalt call me hence, by thy mother my defense, be thy cross my victory. Let us pray. My Jesus, my only hope, I thank you for this book which you opened to the eyes of my soul. This is your passion, undertaken out of love for me. I learned how to love the God of souls. This book contains inexhaustible treasures. O oh, Jesus, how few souls understand you in your martyrdom of love. Happy the soul that has come to understand the love of the heart of Jesus. For the intentions of the Holy Father, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, in obedience to you, your only Son accepted death on the cross for the salvation of mankind. We acknowledge the mysteries of the earth, may receive the gift of redemption in heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.